So if we test the game now, we can see that um, everything seems to be working. If we click on the window, the game informs us it's too high to jump out. The fries are gross, and the door is locked. So that's a good start. Now one of the staples of the Escape the Room genre is the ability for the player to discover clues and objects in places like bins. We conveniently enough have one right here, and we're going to have another clickable object there. So I'm going to create one over the bin, and let's have some kind of clue there. Let's have a secret password or a number that the player is going to be able to use later in the game. So I'm going to move this to the click layer, first of all, and I'm going to rename the variable for this instance into bin. And I'm going to go back to the events, and I'm going to copy this condition, and I'm going to rename fries into bin. And it's going to say there is a post-it note here. A number is written on it. And some random number. Okay, so if we click, you know what's going to happen. This is going to happen. It doesn't really matter that the clickable part is underneath the text, it still works, although it's not great positioning necessarily, but we'll stick with it. Sticky note. We're going to stick with it for the time being. Okay, um, it would be nice, however, if we were actually able to see some of the objects we get to interact with in the game. Right, see them closer up. The game tells us there's a post-it note there, but how do we trust it? It would be nice to have some kind of uh, zoom-in functionality for the important things in the game. And we're going to add one, and we're going to add one not here, not in this layout, but in the external user interface layout. So I'm going to go to external layouts, UI layout, and we're going to create a new object. And the new object will be a sprite, and we'll call it um, item. And we're going to add an animation, and the first animation we're going to add will be empty. So the logic is the objects will actually be on the screen all the time, the whole time the player plays the game, but the player will not see anything because the default animation is empty. But when they click on an object that we want to show them, we're going to change the animation into another image that we have somewhere um, that represents the object, and it's going to be shown closer up in the middle of the screen where the object is located. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to add a new animation under the empty one, and the first animation, know that the numbering starts from zero, so this is animation number zero, this is animation number one, the first animation we're going to add is of a post-it note, right here, notes two. I got the numbers wrong, misremembered. Okay, now one thing we want to do before we close the window is we want to click on edit points. Um, and we need to select animation one here. And we need to edit the origin of the animation. The origin is a coordinate in the image that was a point in the image that the system calculates as coordinates based on. So by default, the origin point of an image is set to the left top corner. And if we were to tell the game that, let's say, uh, this image should be positioned at 300 pixels, 300 pixels, X and Y, uh, it would start drawing the image from 300 pixels, 300 pixels, because it's at the top left um, point of origin. If we were to move the point of origin, and I'm going to do that right here, you can see there's a bit where the, the middle is. So I'm going to drag this right thing closer to the middle, then the origin will be calculated relative to the middle. So when we tell the object to be positioned at a certain coordinate, that coordinate will represent the central part of the image, not the top left corner. So you can see origin and center um, are listed here. And we're going to close it. 
The reason we have to do that is that objects may have different sizes. The images, the animations that we load into the game will have different sizes, and we don't want them jumping around the screen. So we want to set the coordinates, the origin point to zero, sorry, to the middle for all of them, so that all of them will be appear, will appear in the center. I'm really struggling with my English at the moment. Let's click apply. Okay. Um, and we're going to make item a global variable for the or global object, sorry, for the same reasons we did for everything else. Uh, we're going to drag the item here again, roughly in the middle of the, the viewport. And we're going to make sure it's on the UI layer. And we're going to go back to the room. And when the player clicks on the bin, we're going to add another action here. And the action is to display the sprite, or rather to change the animation for the sprite. So it's sprites, animations, and images, change the animation of the item to be set to one. Remember, zero is the first one, one is actually the second one. And the second animation represents a post-it note. So if we launch a preview of the scene and we click here, we know what's going to happen. We click on the bin, here's a post-it note. Right now there's a mismatch between what's written on the notes and what's written in the text. The code is different, but the important thing is um, we're getting a response, we're getting a closer view of the um, object, which is what we intended. The problem is if we click on other things, the object doesn't go away. So it's still there and actually it blocks quite a bit of the view. We need to fix that. What we need to do is we want to be able to click on things and then click again and the object should be gone. So let us do that.